Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. A lot of great action here, a lot of great solutions, great keynote. The future of cloud is going to be all about purpose-built software platforms enabling more and more SaaS, faster performance with custom chips, all enabling great stuff. We've got two great guests here who are going to talk about it from Accenture. We've got uh, Kartik Narin, global lead of Accenture's Cloud First. Welcome to the program, good to see you. And Chris Wegman, AABG, Accenture Amazon Business Group. Technology Lead Senior Managing Director. Thanks for coming on. Oh, great to be here. I was commenting before we came on about Accenture's work you guys have been doing with the clouds. In my article I posted before the reInvent, Dave Vellante coined the term super clouds, which we kind of just put out there. But the idea that people can build really strong platforms that enable a new kind of SaaS has been the big wave. Connect has been a great example we heard on stage from Adam, the CEO. Chris, this has been something that's been a real change where it's not just lift and shift and refactor, it's build value in a platform and new SaaS capabilities. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, I, I would absolutely agree. We've seen this change over time. We've seen the lift and shift and you know, modernize and it's definitely moved into the super clouds. I like the, I like the term, but you know, um, we call them cloud continuums, which we'll talk a little bit about. But yeah, it, it's, it's about building these purpose-built solutions. I think if you look at the keynote today, you look at you know, everybody that was on stage, United, and everyone talking about what they're building. They're technology companies now. They're not just, just a business. You guys did some uh, new research, coining new terms and cloud first. What is this all about? What is this new wave you guys are talking about? Yeah, so John, um, you know, a few years ago, when um, people talked about cloud, they generally meant public cloud. I think the definition of cloud is uh, changing and expanding. Um, and from now on, whenever people talk about cloud, it's actually a cloud continuum. It's a continuum of capability from public to edge and everything in between, all seamlessly connected by cloud-first networks, uh, which means all the capabilities that customers used to get from one public cloud destination, they can actually access that across the continuum, whether that be in their own private data center using the capability of uh, cloud um, with AWS's outpost and other capabilities, uh, or they could use the capability in their edge location, whether it's their retail centers, their uh, warehouse locations, manufacturing, and so on and so forth. So organizations are using the power of cloud uh, beyond one purpose and one destination, but more as an operating system going forward. Chris, what's your take on this redefinition of cloud? What's your take on it? Well, I think, I think it's much needed. I think, you know, Andy kicked it off last year when he, he recognized the term hybrid. Uh, we all, for all who've been around a while, kind of chuckled because they finally said the word. But if you look at the keynote today, they just continued it. Uh, you know, Adam picked it up and ran with it. You know, if you look at all the services, you know, Wavelength and all the different services, you know, there's not a single customer that I have that's just using EC2 or S3, right? They're using all these different services. You saw today, you saw all the different services that United put up on the screen, um, you know, that uh, Dish uh, put up on the screen. So yeah, it, it's, it's how people and companies, if they're truly going to transform and truly use cloud to transform, you have to use the whole continuum. Yeah, and I think the continuum message is a good one because if you look at what the evolution is, it was interesting too, uh, Adam went on and did kind of a history lesson. In the beginning, it felt like I was in the Star Wars movie, <laughs> like back in the old days and then you kind of progressed. You had to be really elite to roll your own cloud and, and the hyperscalers did that, you saw that. Now you still have elite technical people, but now this general purpose or purpose built, it's like having prefabricated platforms and open source we've learned that why do you want to reinvent the wheel if you don't have to? So if I want a call center, I get Connect. If I want to have a, a, a big plug-in platform, I can still build on top of it and have that SaaS unique application. This seems logical. This is new. <laughs> I mean, this is the continuum. Uh, I mean, it seems obvious now looking at it, but how, how far along in, are people getting this? Karthik, what's your take on this? Uh, I think customers are uh, getting it. You know, they, they are looking at cloud more as an operating system for their future innovation. Um, they like the concept that they got from the public cloud, which is easy configurability, consumability, and um, automatability of their infrastructure assets. And when you can get 
that capability uh, as an operating system for your entire enterprise and you could innovate across the spectrum, that's extremely powerful. Uh, we see companies you know, accelerating their adoption to cloud, but we are also seeing um, over the last three years, a lot of that adoption was using cloud as a migration destination. But now, with the power of the cloud continuum where innovation is available with so many new services that Adam launched today, you could use truly cloud as an innovation engine. Yeah. And we're actually seeing that the clients who are using um, the cloud continuum for innovation are doing much better than the ones that are using cloud as a migration destination. In fact, they are uh, doing 2x to 3x um, use of cloud for innovation and uplifting knowledge work. They are actually using 3x more uh, cloud uh, for sustainability purposes. So, huge, huge value. Yeah, I mean, this is a great point, great insight, because what you're saying is essentially, you can't hide anymore. The projects are either going to be successful or not, you can see whether it's users or not. So now you're tying cloud adoption and outcomes together, where you can look at it and saying, we need to make this outcome work, not for building for building's sake. No, okay. those, those projects were discovered during the pandemic. Why are we doing that? So you, you can't hide the ball anymore. All right. And everybody's got to do it now, right? I mean, you don't have a choice. The pandemic is now forcing companies to change. Yeah. They've changed, uh, and that the research shows that the companies that have truly adopted the whole continuum are doing much better than the What's the, the big pattern have. in this continuum research, you guys? What's the big takeaway that you guys have found in that study, in that customer experience that you're having? What's the big, the big aha moment? I think uh, there are a few things. Uh, number one surprising aspect is that uh, the, the companies that use cloud for a broader innovation objective actually was saving more than the ones that use cloud just as a cost saving initiative. That was a, a big aha moment. Number two, when you talk about all of this innovation that uh, AWS provides, sometimes it's easy for organizations to shrug it off saying, this looks like this is only for the elite companies or this is only for the digitally native companies to follow. But our research showed that the companies that were successful adopting cloud continuum, the ones that we call as continuum competitors, 60% of them are pre-digitally born organizations and they were reaping the benefits and they were growing faster, saving more, being more innovative than, than all others. So this is truly uh, usable across the spectrum uh, um, of the G2000 enterprise. Yeah, and I think it's a no brainer, but now you have customers are transforming, they have multiple clouds. You have AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. People are trying to find their swim lane, we heard about skill gap shortage, we did some reporting on that, that this idea of multi-cloud, mm, maybe not, I can't hire enough people, I'm going to bet on this cloud, maybe use that cloud. How are people looking at that? How do you guys see that the cloud competitive um, continuum, uh, or how is the cloud competition affecting the cloud continuum from a customer standpoint? Yeah, I mean, you got to look at it, you know, to use the whole continuum, you've got, a lot of cases, you got to be on the same cloud, right? You can use the whole, you got to use all the different components, all the different services. So I think we are seeing customers that are, are picking one and starting with one, and then adding others. Uh, I see a lot of my customers who are using multiple clouds, but they're using them in different business units, right? So they may pick one business unit to go deep with AWS on, they may go use another business unit to go deep on another cloud, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, everyone is, is yeah. getting multiple, but a lot are starting with one and then adding a, adding a yeah. second one or a third one along the way. Karthik, this is what I was trying to get out of my story. It's a hard, very nuanced point, but if you look at the success of, say, Snowflake and Databricks, all bet on Amazon, and they're super clouds. They, they are on Amazon, but they're now working with Azure as well, because why wouldn't you want to open up your market? Exactly, and, and uh, even industry companies that want to uh, monetize their capabilities using the digital ecosystems are doing that. For example, Siemens wanted to bring all their capabilities in manufacturing and um, machine uh, operating system into a platform called Mindsphere. And they knew that their end goal was going to be um, multi-cloud, but they want to practice you know, leveraging the power of cloud with one platform, and when they created Mindsphere, they started with AWS, and they created that um, solution in the public cloud, in private cloud, also at the edge, by leveraging the power of cloud from you know, public to edge, and 
you know, proved it out. Yeah. And once it started working and they were able to roll it out for customers, now they are giving customers the choice yeah. to be able to use it in other clouds as well. You know, Carter, you mentioned earlier at the top of our interview about um, the platform of the cloud, and Dave and I were talking on our keynote review. We did a little history lesson of when Microsoft owned the monopoly of Windows, the system software, and they had the application suite with Office. But they still wanted developers to build on top of Windows. Okay, but now with cloud, that's one big Windows <laughs> platform-like thing. So the developer's ecosystem is evolving, and so one of the things we're watching, and I want to get your reaction to this, is in every major inflection point in the computer industry, when new ways to build or write code rolled out, the application owners always wanted their software to run on the fastest platform. Speeds and feeds matter in these shifts, because why would I want to have my software run slower? What's your reaction to yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely, uh, and again, there's a lot of things that um, the industry is going through and we are pushing the envelope on digitization. And today's keynote, when you saw the CEO of NASDAQ talking about the, the technology bottlenecks that were preventing the matching algorithm to be finally uh, uh, taken to cloud. Now that capability uh, that's available uh, with AWS is what is enabling that matching algorithm uh, to be taken to uh, cloud through the power of edge. So there's so much technology innovation that's, that's happening that's yeah. constantly um, you know, uh, expanding the boundaries of well, possibilities. I mean, that's exactly the point. And I wrote this in my story and it came out in the keynote yeah. today, which was Adam saying the cloud's expanding. That's the continuum. If it's running cloud operations, does it matter what it is? I mean, it's, if you're at the edge and you're running cloud, maybe because you want latency, of course you want to have low latency. Why wouldn't you want outposts? Again, this is all cloud operations. DevSecOps, data is now kind of cloud operationalized. That seems to be the, what's happening. Yeah, and I think the developers love the fact that they can write for one and put it anywhere, right? And whether it's a, you know, EKS on, you know, uh, on inside, I don't even know what you call it anymore, the public cloud, right? Or all the way out at the edge, right? Uh, you write it once, you can deploy it there, and it makes their lives a, a lot easier. And, you know, as you said, the per, it's all about performance, so they get the best option. Well, we love having you guys on theCUBE Accenture. You guys have really smart, talented people, always great commentary. Um, Dave and I were looking at reviewing the tape, so to speak. It's not really tape anymore, it's, it's digitally stored on S3. But um, we were looking back at 2016 when we first started talking about horizontally scalable cloud and vertically specialized applications. If you look at the keynote today and squint through the announcements, Amazon's going to offer full horizontal scalability and vertical specialization at the app level with machine learning capabilities. This means that you need data to be horizontally addressable, which is kind of counterintuitive, but you're seeing all the success around data lakes and lakes. This is the new architecture. It's kind of proven now. What do you guys think? Yeah, again, the, the aspect of cloud is about democratized innovation. The first element is, even though there's so much infrastructure build out and infrastructural elements where there's continuous innovation going on, the enterprises and developers are moving from buy versus build decisions to assembling and consuming uh, options. And when they assemble and consume, they want newer and newer services to be available that is very specific to their industry and specific to functions, whether it is supply chain function or manufacturing function or so on and so forth. For this, there are going to be specific data that is going to be re required or operational for that particular use case, but the whole idea of predictive analytics and AI and machine learning and data science is about how do you find correlations between operational data for a particular uh, capability with things that in the previous world was unrelated. For that, you need to bring all of this data together. Uh, time will tell whether all the data is going to move to one location or is there going to be distributed computing of that data yeah. with more technology, but that's the role that uh, data is going to play in these verticalized yeah. solutions. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. I want to get you guys, while well, we've got one couple of minutes left, um, advice to people that are looking to go this next level. Um, that they know the continuum's coming. You guys have been providing great solutions and advice to your customers. For the folks watching, what advice can you give where they're just putting their toe in the water or want to go full in? Yeah, yeah so, um, you know, we, we found in the research that there were some common patterns um, that 
we're followed by these continuum competitors, the ones that were succeeding or winning in the cloud, and there was namely four of them. The first one, and these four can be adopted by others for them to also win in the continuum. The first one was looking at the power of the continuum, how the technology is evolving, and creating a strategy to take advantage of the evolution of the continuum. That's number one. Number two, this is about organizational change. So don't go about this change in a soft manner. There are elements that you need to change within your organization to imbibe this uh, wholeheartedly. That's the second thing. Third thing is one common aspect that all the continuum competitors followed was uh, they put experience in the forefront for everything, um, for their end customers. Last but not the least, this is a holistic journey and an enterprise-wide journey, and this would require CSO level, um, you know, uh, CEO level commitment uh, on a longer term to achieve this. So with these four things, uh, most companies can achieve the successes that the continuum competitors are seeing. Awesome insight. Chris, real quick, 30 seconds, what's your advice? Don't be afraid, <laughs> I, it, it's pretty simple. The water's warm, come on in. Yeah, come on in. It, uh, a lot have gone before you, right? And you know, it, it can be scary, it can be daunting, right? A lot of services, uh, don't be scared. Get in and, and go at it. Yeah, one of the jobs I love about being a CUBE host is you talk to people many years earlier, you guys got it right at Accenture, congratulations. You were deploying, you saw this wave of purpose built before anyone else, and congratulations, some great, great success. Thanks, thanks, thanks for, for having coming us. on the CUBE. Okay, I'm John Furrier, you're watching us here live in Las Vegas for AWS reInvent 2021 coverage, the CUBE, the leader in tech coverage.